The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. IntelliFlow is on a mission to give more people access to financial advice. Their technology, IntelliFlow Office, powers and streamlines the advisory experience for over 30,000 financial advisors worldwide, making an impact at every stage of the advice process, including practice management, revenue management, cash flow modelling, client portals and more. IntelliFlow Office helps advisors manage all their client and provider data within a single integrated ecosystem that just works. Discover IntelliFlow for yourself by visiting IntelliFlow.com. Hello, welcome back. I'm James Rickley. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the podcast. I have the pleasure today of speaking with Dawn Thomas. Dawn, I've followed you on Instagram of all places for a long while. I love your your, your videos and your your cooking and your in your trance music. I love it. Um, <laughs> Dawn, you're at, at Wealth Designers. Thank you for for joining us today on the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me, James, and supporting the trans movement. I'm I'm very much connected to that. <laughs> We, we, we're going to talk today about finding your finding your forever home as an employee in in, in financial advice. Whether you've been in advice for in advice for a long while, whether you're going through the professional year and you know, finding your way out the other side of that. Uh, Dawn, you've you know you've worked in a, in a few different businesses and found your home, found your voice, <laughs> uh, which which is fantastic. And hopefully, we can you know you can share some of that with everyone today. Yeah, maybe Dawn, if if we start with we, where are you at at the moment, and and what's your kind of what's your journey been like to find your forever home? You used the phrase forever home before. My forever home, um, yeah. And, and telling like? you my date, my dating yeah. history. I'll tell you my dating history. <laughs> I'm willing to go there today. <laughs> um, so I am at the Wealth Designers, um, and I found my forever home, yep. which uh, has taken a while. Like I think um, as an advisor coming from the banking background, and I know this resonates with a number of advisors who are around during the Royal Commission. And how banks, what it seemed yeah. like abruptly, um, kind of shut us down, and we became part of the play. <laughs> we had, um, yeah. we had a lot yeah. of pride in what we did. We we loved our peers. A lot of us loved the banking environment with, um, you know, just so much of green tea and teamwork, and um, you know, and and it made us, I think, a number of us think about where do we go from here. If I suppose what you were doing before was sort of what you wanted to do, and then that abruptly ends, you know, the bank sort of said. Yes. Um, you know, uh, in a way, they said, um, it's not us, it's you. <laughs> I don't know to advisors. Yeah. Um, they broke up. That was probably the initial first long-term breakup that I did not see coming. Um, and I felt like I committed myself 100% to that. And I was managing a team of advisors. So I had gone that linear route of bank advancement where you go from um, like a grad to an advisor, to a business advisor, and then you are you know, managing advisors, right? And I always believed in amplifying the impact of advice. I thought banks could do that if we had the right intentions, like we could get out to more people. Yes. Um, and, and I was like, I was so proud of what we did. I remember what we did as advisors. And I thought the bank could be a vehicle for that as well, as well as female empowerment. Um, so that ended. <laughs> and then I went into the SME space. And when you go into that space, yes. um, I must say that, you know, leaving the bank in that state, you know, if like a relationship, you don't actually know what you want. I wouldn't say it's a rebound, but you don't really have time to think about where you want, but you go to the next relationship. Um, and yeah, you, find you grow another, from just that. find another job to go to, don't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. If you don't really know what you want, it's a bit hard to look for it. Um, and I, I had a really amazing boss for over four years uh, called Jamie Luxton, and he helped me find my voice. Um, and if you're aware of, like, you know, with, with, bank advisors we're not really encouraged to go on social media and be outspoken because there's a lot of rules right we have to stay within a box um and he gave me the space to just like just be you you know and and i did that um and it was nice just finding out who i was getting to know what my voice was over that time and experimenting with content covid came around which was great because uh i think a lot of us tried with different content styles since we couldn't be in person places 
Um, and he was really supportive of that. But then you come to a point of going, um, you know, do you want to do you want to take this to the next level long term? You know, and whenever when we talks about equity and how is it going to be long term, um, I think for me, I I started to get sense that I wanted something different, um, and that was the journey of you know going to another place and then finding out that again it was not what I realized. I didn't like that traditional sense of financial advice. I also noticed that. With my peers, and even I love watching your content. I love that you're yourself. You're taking a video and you're on the walk somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, where is James now? And he's talking about superannuation. I'm like, oh my gosh, I should just do what James is doing. Um, but you know, I'm so like that bank side like, where I'm like, oh my god, compliance, compliance. I need someone to check what I'm saying before <laughs> I call the video. But I love, I love that bit of just being yourself and then experimenting and a collaborative environment where advisors are not pitted against each other. I feel the traditional yeah. sense of advice is is dog eat dog. There's no encouragement or incentive for you to help someone else because you've got to look out for yourself and your numbers. And I am a team player, right? Like I'm a leader, but I'm a team player. Like I'm like I want everyone to lift up together. Um, and that's how I found the wealth designers with Troy McMillan and um, Kara Graham. It was like a one two punch because Troy, I've always been. Um, had a soft spot for, saw him in the 2019 AFA um, roadshow and I saw him and Kara up on stage and I, was, I had that WA pride and I was sitting there going, um, yeah. I don't think I'm worthy enough to be a part of their business. I remember sitting in there going, I'm in awe of them, uh, but I, I didn't think that I'd fit into their business because I'm too like, you know me, like I'm a bit, <laughs> I thought they were really like serious and smart <laughs> and I'm just not, like I just, I'm more like, you know, into my trance and into like cuddles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but I didn't know that Troy had been having his eye on me to join the business, but we never exchanged that sentiment okay. because he said he's not in the business yeah. of like poaching advisors from, from um, businesses. Um, and the other part of it was Cara. Cara and each other from the AFA Inspire group. So we would catch up anyway. And then she told me she was pregnant and she was having a lot of trouble finding someone that could look after her book while she went on leave for 12 months. So she used the baby angle to kind of squeeze me into <laughs> pushing me over the line. <laughs> Soft, softened me up. She's like, Don, she, the way she said it to me was, I'm not even, Don, I'm not, you don't have to say anything. I'm just throwing it out there into the universe. <laughs> I think you'd be an amazing fit. Um, so between the both of them, James, um, I ended up at TWD and I first went, okay, is this all it's, it is? You know, because sometimes you go in and are you going to move past the dating phase and actually find out the real crux of the relationship? And it's it's not really all that. Um, and, you know, for me, I immediately had a sense that it was my advice hope. Um, I, I'm just short of getting a tattoo of TWD somewhere on my body. But it will. <laughs> it's under review. <laughs> um, but I've landed. I've landed. Yeah. And so how long have you been there now? So I've been there a year. Okay. Right. So it's fifth. still... Reasonably new in that if we use this in analogy of the relationship, but like you 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 well and truly feel like you're home. You're home. I mean, you know how it is. Like if, again, yeah. if, if we're going back to dating analogy, when you've had an experience over a while and you fine tune what you want, um, and you meet the right setup, and it doesn't mean it's the the perfect setup without challenges, but it's perfect for me. Like I'm sure my husband will say that um, I'm not a perfect person, <laughs> but we're perfect for yeah. each other, and we work through the challenges. Yeah. So how how can how can others like can you share a bit of wisdom for others that are going through the same thing? You know, they're they're, they're sitting they're sitting in a business where they don't feel like they can be their true self. They're not. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're not enjoying it. They're you know they're getting that the, the Sunday scare is going. Oh no, I've got to go back to work tomorrow morning. I, I suspect you don't yeah. get that. It doesn't it doesn't sound like you get that. <laughs> you kind of bounce out of bed on a Monday morning. And I'm off to I'm off to work. Yeah. How do, how do we encourage others to find their own home, look outside of the four walls that they're in? What what can people do? Look, I, I think it starts with, first of all, community, because you need to get to know the advice community, right? So like podcasts like like this with Ensemble, um, you know, going on LinkedIn and connecting up to people that you resonate with their content, I think firstly starts getting you an idea of the kind of advice practices out there. Um, because if you stay within your four physical, like the walls, right, that physical environment, it might, I think some people even get disillusioned with financial advice. They might say, oh, financial advice is one way. When we know financial advice 
can be served in many, many different ways, right? And and it, it can actually serve so many people. As an advisor, you know, if you're your authentic self, you're going to draw the right client towards you because it's really about people. It's about two people connecting and being on a journey to get ahead financially, right? And reaching the goals. Um, so if you, that first thing you said, if you're sitting in a place where you don't feel like yourself, you don't feel like you can have an honest chat about the flexibility you might need because you are balancing off um, you know, life commitments. Everybody has life commitments. Um, you're afraid to even just bring things up. Then that's, a first of all, a sign that it's probably not the right place for you. Um, and it's just having to, what you want to do is grow your community, look at what's out there, and then start talking to people in the community as well. Because that time yeah. when you leave, like you don't want to be looking for a job when you've had enough, when you actually had a gut full. You kind of want to leave on your own terms. Like you don't want to leave when you've actually got yes. nothing left in the tank. So it could even be a year. Yeah. It could be a two-year process before you actually move. But when that time comes where the right opportunity lands, you want to be you want to be ready for it and and rejuvenated for it. You know. So even in if you're put up for job interviews, um, you can gauge the culture of the company by asking really you know, the responses of the honestness you want to ask. Um, you know. So if you're saying for example, oh, you know, I've got a four-year-old and I need to get back in time to pick them up, right? You should be able to say that at a job interview. If you get a response that is not great, that's not a good sign, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's the truth, right? You might as well test it out. In If you're thinking about a dating phase, you're sitting across somebody <laughs> at big dinner. Not that I've dated that much that way, but, you know, it, you, you want to be really upfront with what are the key things you need to be able to do your job well. You know, and then, um, yes. and then be able to also, you know, really look into the company that you're at. A job is not a job. Um, I feel the different financial planning practices that are very successful have a philosophy and a way of life. So does it fit in with you? Do the values actually connect? So it's not just a marketing exercise of these are our values. You know, it's like when I went to the wealth designers, Troy genuinely gets me. Troy genuinely gets how nuts I am, and he does not want me to change one bit. Right? He just tells me. Please don't stop having yeah. your ideas because I'll say, I'll try, I've got another crazy idea. I was driving to work and I had an idea. He's like, don't stop. <laughs> Just keep on having them and we'll create a space for that, you know? So um, I think that the, if you're in that stage where you've noticed that you're not feeling like yourself, grow your community, be honest in job interviews really from the start, you know, don't, don't be afraid of, I'm not going to get the opportunity. We know there are so many opportunities out there. I think that might have a reverse problem now where you might have too many opportunities as, as an advisor or as an associate. So really be honest and bring your true self to those interviews and tell them what you need. Um, that would be a good start. I I get the feeling just from others that I know that have been in, and bit like the business here, the people that have left in, at different points in time, uh, maybe there's, there's a feeling of if you're not, you because know, you, you, don't, you don't know what you don't know is the first part. And so you, your point about, and building the community and, and just talking to other people, you might not realize how things are in other businesses. You might right. not actually be that unhappy where you are, but there's some amazing things that people are doing in other businesses that are that really excite you and you really want to yes. go to. Yes. I, also get the, I also get the sense from talking to different people at different events and so forth uh, that there maybe there's this perception that, well, if I'm not, if I'm not terribly happy where I am, that I actually need to, need to go and do it on my own. Do it. Yes. You know, go and set up my own financial planning business and do it myself. Yes, you, you obviously haven't gone down that route, and I'm sure you, you know you 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 possibly you possibly could. But you know, we're talking about you know, being being an employed advisor. Do, do you want to talk about? Uh, you know, do you have any comments on this idea of going and doing your own thing, which I'm sure is a whole lot of work, versus trying to find your home in an established business, but finding the right home that allows you to flourish and be yourself. Yeah, I feel like I'm an advocate for employees, <laughs> forever employees, maybe yeah. if that's the case. Because a number of times yeah. someone has told me, set up your own business. Because they're like, Dawn, if you want to do yeah. the stuff you want to do, set up your own business. Look, I've got three kids, right? <laughs> like I, And I want to, um, I'm also studying part-time. I, I really don't want to have more meetings than I need to, you know, in, in, in a day to talk about things that are non-client related. Like I'd rather just focus on my clients. And then focus on the things I want to do for the profession. You know, whether that's my study or my advocacy work through Inspire for Women in Advice. Like I know now at this point in my life that I've got a set amount of time 
and I can only kind of do it in the things that I want. I think business ownership is is not right for me right now, you know, but I feel yep. that as an employee, you want to be able to find a space where, first of all, they understand you because you can be in an environment where you can be championed for the great stuff you have or be shamed for being who you are. Like these, this is like, these are environments that exist at the moment. And I just feel for those people who are shamed when when all of us really have strength. In the advice profession, there's a whole suite of skills that we need. Not everybody has everything and we're all constantly learning. So first of all, can you, um, you know, can you bring that to your workplace and say, hey, I'm not great at this. Can I get the help for it? You know, and I am very honest about my points that I wouldn't call it as weakness. I say my growth areas. <laughs> And I'm also aware of my yeah. strength, right? So I, I judge a workplace as well by how safe it is for me to raise the things that I'm not sure about because I do want to get better in these areas. Um, and as an employee, given that opportunity within my roles and my areas of growth to feel like I'm valued matters, but also having an ability to mold what the business is doing without necessarily having yeah. ownership. And that's why, you know, like the partners at the Wealth Designers um, are very open to the conversation. Like I said, like Troy gets me, which not many people get. I think with you, it's well, James, I know with your content, not everybody gets what you do. So you really, really value the people who actually, the wavelength, the brave wavelength. Um, but then it's the other support, you know, like getting the advice, building up your technical skills in certain areas you're not familiar with. So, you know, um, as an employee, you can do a lot you can be a part of an industry association like i said i made it as a national chair and i felt very unworthy when i went on there i was like how do i compare to kate mccallum like kate mccallum has her own business she's written yeah. a book like, she's amazing who am i i'm just like an employee from wa but yeah. it at the end of the day it doesn't matter you have a passion you can lead you don't need to be a business owner and if you have a family for eggs like i do you can still do a lot of what you want to do without having business ownership i think that's what i've learned in this journey yeah and you and and you're the like as, as much as you 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 almost got kind of a bit it's coming you, there's a bit of self-doubt in yourself like who am i am i worthy to be this yeah, person yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I i you know i i I've, I've seen you know articles of you in the in a different magazine and stuff for years and like oh wow look at this stuff that dawn's doing look at their bright purple hair and all the rest of it like this, I'm just, there's, there's people absolutely in the industry that are looking up to you and going, oh, wow, look at all the things that she's doing. I don't feel worthy of being on her team. And you, uh, that there, there's, there's absolutely going to be people like that out there. You, do you want to talk a bit about, about kind of finding your voice and, and bringing your authentic self? Like, you know, you, you, you mentioned about being in the bank, and I suspect, not that I ever worked in a bank, but I suspect being in a bank environment, you had to do certain things and follow certain guidelines and maybe look a certain way and, and you know, talk a certain way with, with clients, we, you know, we, was it somewhat constrained in you and your personality versus you know, there's, I imagine there's been an evolution of you, you know, bringing your full self <laughs> into, into the advice industry. What, what's that been like? Look, I think internally in the bank, I was very much myself, but I just never expressed it externally, yep. never use social media. Um, okay. And I must say that within the bank, I think that's why I say when I, I did enjoy times in there, even though there were challenges, um, I was recognized a lot by not only my managers, but senior leadership in the bank because they were like, they got this weird sense of my approach to advice. Because I don't, I don't think I know how yeah. to turn up to work without being myself. Like I have to, like, I, I, yeah. I don't think I could do that. Um, so, you know, I arrive and, you know, like you go out with, um, let's say your your regional bankers, you know, the bankers that go off and see farmers. I'll be like, hi guys, like, you know, like, I know nothing about farming. <laughs> but we build our bond. <laughs> you know, I hop in their car, you know, I'm with them for 12 hours. I'm talking to farmers who know that I'm from Singapore and know nothing. You know, they all have a laugh at me with certain things I don't know. But it's just like, look, I can't hide back that I am different, even visually, even, you know, being um, a woman of colour, being an immigrant, the way I sound, everything is different, right? And, and even if you weren't all those things, everyone is different anyway. Um, so that was received, like I never had an issue with it in the bank, though I there were groups of people that had an issue with me being accepted for it because I think they were used to, they did this a certain way, how can I be doing things another way and then getting recognized for it? And it's not like I was doing anything on purpose, it's just that you're showing up and being yourself. Um, you know, I always felt safe to go to senior leadership and give them my feedback because I never felt like, 
I'm a low level employee, so I can't talk to you. I'll just be like, I'm going to give you feedback <laughs> on my end for my nickel words. <laughs> Maybe you don't know what's happening. Um, and in, in branch world, um, with banking, you have to, your team is actually the branch, you know, so I had to make it interesting for them. I, I guess I've been doing financial literacy from day dot because I'll have a group of people who did not know much about TTR, didn't know about just that. And you've got five minutes in the morning to pitch to them why it's important for someone to see a financial advisor, you know. So I found my skill set as an arts graduate. Maybe that's where the doubt comes from because I'm my undergraduate degree is a media degree. That came in very handy with all the communication pieces that were needed in the bank. Absolutely. Yeah, but stepping out of it, James, that was the other bits. I, I that voice more openly and and being um, like trying out LinkedIn more and then venturing into Instagram badly. That came after the bank, you know, and that came from from just yeah, being okay. able to go. Yeah, the shackles are off now. No one's watching you <laughs> with what you put on. You don't need really approvals of what's going to be. Stand, yeah, yeah. So you you mentioned before that you're doing some some studying and and you know, inspire advocacy work with the yeah within the industry. What are, what are you studying? What 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 are you up to at the moment? Yeah, so um, I'm doing a PhD part time um, studying the superannuation journeys of Generation Z. So that is an area that I'm very passionate about. You know, I think young people have the benefit of long term investing, right? They have the benefit of time. So I'm like, why would you not use that? Yes. If you you don't want to wait till you're forty or fifty to find out that you had the benefit of time. So that's the stuff that I teach my kids and that's the stuff I want to research. So it's very much in line. Um and Troy gets that as well in terms of, of the wealth designers. Uh is very much in line with what you know, everything's in line, right? So um I took a, a break for two semesters when I joined the wealth designers just to be able to um, ensure that all the client transfers are going well. But my, I've been in touch with my supervisors and we are um, we're picking up everything again because as you can imagine, it's quite intensive having to do all the academic reading to put through things in, within deadlines. Otherwise, I get kicked out of the course. Uh, so, um, And the other thing exciting around the studies is that uh, there's something called the National um, Industry PhD Program that's just been launched this semester um, where people who are in industries wanting to do PhDs can get a scholarship where both their workplace and the university are actually paid funds so that they can help support and that was actually doing the research. Yeah. Ben Nielsen's all over it. (laughs) He's my buddy with with helping me out with all of that. Um, So I even know with the the wealth designers, Troy, essentially, when we apply for that scholarship for me next semester, Troy will essentially be sitting as a supervisor from the industry side, the wealth designers, and working with, in a way, the university. Uh, and I think that's so powerful. Like, wouldn't you want to get your name behind? Like, I didn't think you'll be excited by it, but he is pretty excited around it. Um, so that's what yeah. the study is doing. And it'll probably take, you know, I would say about four years for me to complete it because I'm doing it yeah. slowly. Um, and then in terms of what Inspire, you, yeah. oh, sorry. I was going to just, just, just on the studies. So what what are you hoping that will come out of, of it? So, so did you say Gen Z? Did you say? Yes. What, Gen what generation Z. did you say then? Gen Z. Generation Z. Yeah, what are you hoping will come out of the the studies that you're doing? Will you like you you obviously have to do a whole lot of um, PhDs and, and all the rest of it or thesis, but can do you think you might be able to leverage that into the advice that you're doing, teaching for schools or something? Like, what what do you think might come out of it? Look, I I approached it in the way that um, we're not going to get enough support as an advice committee community to be able to help young people, right? Even I am disillusioned on that front that we're not supported enough as a profession. So I want it to be clear for superannuation companies as well as employers on how to support young people when they are um, going through their first superannuation journeys. And so as we know with super stapling and the removal of the income test threshold for super guarantee, you know, someone as young as 15 yep. could end up with their first super fund and then it stapled them till they finally decide they want to look at their superannuation, right? So for me, I'm like, this is the main part of our retirement system. I don't, I understand that we, the government is having to approach it in a very passive manner because our system is passive um, and people are passive because the system is so complex and that's why we have a job as advisors. But um, yeah. it's just, I just like, I we need to give them better support. So my first round, I had a mini research round as part of the integrated part. So people who are, don't have a master's by research, I've got a master's by by coursework, um, you've got to do like one year of units where you're doing many components of a PhD so that you can demonstrate to the university that you can tackle the PhD. 
Um, and we ran a survey for about 100 Gen Z on their superannuation experience. And whether they were from a private school or whether they were from a public school, they felt like there was no education really provided to them or support. Um, so it's not like they didn't think it was important. They just, the ones really talking about it. Um, and if we know about their parents, their parents are probably not that comfortable to have the conversation with them. So I'm, I'm just hoping that this research just, first of all, really outlines the experience of Generation Z. Just because they are a young generation, we don't have a lot of research in that area. Um, and then we're going to be able to find ways to better support them from the schools, from superannuation funds, from employers. Because I think about 50% had employer-selected funds. So yeah, that's the hope. Maybe we can change the outcome of a whole generation. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 incredible work. Because when, like, you, like you know, I think back to my first job. My first job, I worked in Kmart. I had a rest super fund because it's the retail one yeah. default, and yeah, you said like it's staple you now, isn't it? So you can get you get the understand why they've done this stapling thing to try and avoid people having multiple super funds and money getting lost all over the place. But yeah, yes. you really are locking a fifteen year old in that works at McDonald's into that superannuation fund, good, bad, or otherwise, and yeah. only time's going to tell whether it's been a good one or not, yes. you know, for, for probably the best part of you know, 20 to 25 years before they Correct. get into their mid-30s or 40s and they go, actually, I should start to think about this money stuff a little bit a little bit more. And that's that's a huge time frame that someone could have been stuck in a poor one versus a good one. Never thought about it until uh, you're sharing it with me. No, I know, I know that our retirement system is slow to adapt to what the current needs are, the population, right? So the way I look at it is, okay, we've got to work with what we have because we know it's not going to change overnight. It's a very slow, as much as people say, superannuation changes all the time. There's chalk, like, no, it changes very slowly all the time. Um, and and even though we look at young people, um, I talk to my children about the fire movement um, and, and also less reliance on your job dictating your ability to retire well. It's more about what you do with the money to be able to invest it long-term that will give you choices through life in terms of living towards, really, if you think about your authentic life. Um, I've been raised in that bit of you work in a one job <laughs> till your 60s and you retire. That's what my parents did. So that's what I've as a learned kind of way of approaching it. But for my children, I, you, you, we, we understand this new generation differently. You know, they are value driven. You know, from the surveys that are coming through, they're very value aligned. You know, they are pushing employers to look at work differently. You know, they want the world to be a better place. So why not, if you, are, if you are wanting to drive change, your money in superannuation can drive change through ethical investments, for example, if that's your thing, right? If you feel like that compounding effect over time, salary sacrificing over time, but if you don't get them engaged, they don't actually know what they're missing out on. So, um, and I, yeah, and even though it was, we're saying, okay, the superannuation is there, they're going to get it when they're 60. Look, at some point, they're going to reach 60. I understand it's not a perfect system, uh, but you really want the funds that are funding you from 60 onwards to be sitting in a tax-effective environment. So, you know, go live your life up to 60. Nobody's telling you not to holiday at 30 and have, you know, find yourself in Spain. Go do all those things. But from 60, at least you know that 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 part, that part of money is actually working for you. The um, the advocacy work in, in the industry was the other bit that I that yeah. I asked you, but that, that study is quite interesting what, you, what you're going <laughs> through. So, in, so Inspire, I've, I've, I've had a a chat with a with a few other people that have been involved with with in, with Inspire, but uh, so you're the WIE chair. You are were. T- tell us about Inspire. Okay, I'm I'm the national chair. Very um, I, um in oh, terms of, there you go. Yeah, of of AFA, um, and I know F Triple A is part of the process that we are doing the project work on. What is that shaping up to? Um, so um, at the moment, uh, I believe I'm still the national chair. <laughs> But what that is is like you know. So I've the state, the state, um, you know, um, chairs are New South Wales. We've got uh, Amy Baker, Ali Fordham's from um, Queensland. Uh, we've got Jasmine Tacot from yeah. um, Victoria, um, and then currently in WA we have, um, I suppose it, that's not filled at the moment. So already with Inspire and just even with the chairs, I feel like I work with super women, like they are amazing, amazing women. I get so inspired by them. And further that, they've got committees with further more inspiring women. And and our job is to bring together, you know, women in our profession, not just advisors, women who are wanting to be in here, even people of diverse groups, and really making them feel seen and heard and making sure that we can all grow together 
into this future together, just making sure they understand they have a place here, they're valued, um, and we want to work together as a profession to help them find their place as well. Yep. How did you how did you end up getting involved with 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 it all? How how did that happen? That's a good question, James. <laughs> It's all it's all the part of life just accidentally rolling over to the next. Um, so part of <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I, 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 <laughs> I thought that's what you're going to say. Life twists and turns, and and you ended up there because that seems like everything everything that's happened to you up until now. That yes. seems like how it's evolved. You just go with the flow, and I go with the flow. And hey, it's a, you have a good time. It's it's all a trans festival, James. You know, you put on Tiesto for like an hour or so, and you just go. So if this is the way, like. You, you, firstly, I believe in say yes to the universe, right? Things are thrown at you. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it may not always work out, right? But that's fine. You always got something to learn. Um, and when I left the bank, that's when I started actually entering myself into awards. Um, and I know women as a whole don't, they feel actually, how do you put it? We feel immodest if we first of all talk about achievements. And secondly, going to awards, you're like, you're ex- almost expecting sales to go, hey, you're worthy to go into awards, please enter yourself, right? I had mentors at that point and stuff, and I just went like, look, I felt like a phoenix rising from the ashes after leaving from the bank, you know? After that, I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to have anyone nominate me. I'm just going to nominate myself, and I'm not going to be, I don't even care about it, right? So it started with that process of um, entering myself into awards. The self-reflective piece on it, when you put in an application, is amazing. You know, you start really taking ownership of what you've done over the years. And I started in 2017, um, and in 2019, I won the Female Excellence and Advice Award. And um, that put me in touch with AFA. Um, the AFA had such, they did such a great job with um, just putting me in front of opportunities to use my voice. And then I've kind of run with that and done further things with that. Um, and from that year, because technically I've been a winner for three years, James, because of COVID, <laughs> the longest standing winner. No. Um, Yes. Yeah, longest around here, yeah, longest standing winner. Long, longest standing winner. Um, so they they could see, I suppose, more of my voice coming through uh, from winning that award, getting the platforms, using the platforms. Then I was approached by AFA to be the national chair. And yeah, the first thing was like, are you sure you've got the right person? I, I'm not sure you've got the right person. Are you sure you want my voice? You know, like I asked that. I'm a bit weird. Do you want me speaking on behalf of the AFA women? Because I don't know if you want that. <laughs> and they assured me. Um, they just wanted me to be me and to do that. Um, and I'm so grateful that they, they've asked me to do that, James, because I wouldn't have pictured myself in the role. Um, and it's been such a giving role. Um, and I think there's so much more work that we have to do. One of, I don't know, we'll, kind of, we'll, we'll start, to, start to draw the conversation to a close, but one thing that you just said there, and, and, and it's, 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 clearly, it's clearly what's gotten you to, to where you are, and, and I'm often saying it to some of the younger guys here, just, just say yes. Like Things will come your way over time. Just say yes. It might be scary. It might be frightening. Like you're doubting yourself. Am I worthy of being yeah. the <laughs> national chair? Absolutely, you're worthy of being the national chair. Like who doesn't want to, you know, listen to you speaking at different events and so forth? But it's just, it's, but it's just this. Say yes. Like don't get, yeah. don't let the fear of something get in the way. Say yes. Worry about what you've said yes to later on. But, but say yes and take up that opportunity. Yeah. Um, that seems to be something that, you know, in our guiding principle of sorts that you've been living by and yes. uh, look at where you are now. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, that's the only way it's just that, yeah, you're right. And you put it down here is that I have, doesn't mean I say yes without doubts. I actually have a lot of doubts, but I'm just like, you know what? Let's just see how this goes because if anything, it's a growth opportunity. Within a month of me joining the wealth designers, Troy got me to do the video <laughs> for the website. I was just voluntold. He's like, Dot, I think you'll be really good for this. And that's the thing about Troy as well, that is that he's always treated me like a long-term, like this was this was really like a long-term thing from the start. Like I didn't have to be there for years to be worthy enough to be on the video of the website. Um, he put me on there and it was a whole day of filming, James, like learning lines, looking to the camera. Like it's a short one-minute video. But man, I tell you, I slept really well that night because I was just <laughs> not sleeping for days before. Um, and people have messaged me and go, oh, you're really natural in that. I'm like, I was afraid, like I was nervous, but okay, look, now I can say I've done, you know, been in front of the camera, learned lines, um, pretended like I knew what I was talking about and it's possible, right? So that's ticked off. <laughs> not, I'm not changing career. I'm not going to be in front of the camera, but it, it's, it's just one of those things that um, you, you, you're better for doing it, even though you're really nervous for it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. 
Well, Dawn, thank you for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've wanted to speak <laughs> with you for some time. I'm glad we could record something for Ensemble. Yeah. You, you just shine through even on the podcast. So everyone's going to get a sense of sense of you and your attitude. We love it. Thank you for being part of the part of Ensemble today. Oh, thank you so much, James. And honestly, your content is it's so good. It just reminds everyone to just be yourself, record anywhere. That's a lesson you're giving me. That's a challenge. So if you see some content keep, coming out, just keep showing up. You. Yes, keep showing up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dawn. Okay, thanks, James.